Hi everyone and welcome back to Mystic Moons Astrology. My name is Ashley and today I wanted to get on the page and converse with you a little bit about Pluto, specifically Pluto and synastry and composite that can create some awakening. So welcome back and thank you all so much for the new subscriptions and if you haven't subscribed yet feel free to subscribe to the page to keep up with the astrology and the transit planet asteroid talk that we have here going on in mystic moons astrology so anyhow man oh man when we're talking about pluto we are speaking about um hades it is the underworld and um i was actually reading the other day in robert graves the greek myths um, book one, chapter 31, and in speaking of Hades, he says, He willingly allows none of his subjects to escape, and the few who visit Tartarus return alive to describe it. It's hidden. Pluto Hades wants to keep his dwellings, his life, his world hidden, and a bit of a mystery, which makes him the most hated of all the gods, said by Robert Graves in this book. Hades is styled Pluton or Pluto, the rich one. So when we're talking about it, like I said, we're talking about hidden. He wants to keep his dwellings, his life, everything hidden. So when we're talking about sinistry aspects with Pluto, it's very, very attractive. It's very alluring. But there's a part of us when we connect with a Pluto individual and we're a planet person or an axis person or a nodal person. When we um, touch this person with our planet and we touch their Pluto, it awakens something in them uh, that's deep, that's hidden, that's uh, under the surface. And for us, we can go in that depth as well. We can be compelled to jump right in because oh my gosh, your Pluto is touching me and it feels so alluring and hypnotizing and all the things that Pluto encompasses. And um, it can give enormous depth to the interaction in a sinistry chart because it's because our planets symbolize purpose, energy, light, um, knowledge, uh, this kind of thing. With Pluto, we're talking about like I said, a more hidden, darker, under the surface energy that deals with change. Therefore, um, this is like a yin and a yang um, thing. And dealing with the dark too much can be tough. It is not easy. It is not like these uh, Pluto aspects. Uh, initially, they're like very fiery and like um, exciting because there's this hidden spot to somebody that we want to uncover and we want to dredge up and we want to get involved in this stuff. However, uh, we've got to have some light pulled into the hidden spaces so that we can um, not have some of the more negative themes going on when we have Pluto contacts. Themes of possessiveness are rampant here. Both don't want to lose uh, this deep feeling, this powerful bond, the secret, the um, magnetic allure that is really there. And pulling the two together and subconsciously, actually consciously, they don't realize that this is like happening. That's why it's so powerful because the creation of this aspect um, is not something that we're like okay, we sign up for that as soon as we touch somebody's Pluto or they touch our planet or, or they touch our Pluto. Uh, but there will be things such as power plays, manipulation, hidden feelings, secrets, underlying intensity. It's a brutally honest potion for both in sinistry that's all consuming it can be calculating it can be overpowering it can be psychologically jarring especially with the moon uh, and it can uncover some repressed issues and hang-ups of uh, both and um, there'll be this alluring mysterious attractive um, 
hypnotic condition to feel like we need to go into this. Uh, it may be dark, hypnotic, magnetic. It can be scary. And something deep within us, when we meet a Plutonic person or we are that person projecting our Pluto on someone else, um, <clears throat> something may say don't in the back of our mind initially because there's like a fear there's like this thing that comes up it, that our body's like fight or flight and um, that's the thing is Pluto's the overrider of foresight so we can't see in the future how we're going to feel once this these power plays and this emotional um, psychologically jarring energy takes us on a roller coaster into the depths um, so you know it, it doesn't think of that it, it can go against our intuition you know like I said something's calling to us and it's saying don't do that don't go after that person don't look into their eyes don't even go there but it's so alluring to go there and oftentimes we find with Pluto connections in Sinistry when we're looking at those um, you know there's there's the boat farer farrier that is in the underworld and he ferries all the souls uh, in Tartarus and the different dimensions of Tartarus where they belong and oftentimes we've paid that boat ferry like we come with the coin intact because we're like, here, let's go. <laughs> and looking out from the boat dock and from the boat that we're about to board and we're about to take this underworld journey, we have a sense of trepidation and a sense of fear. But against our own intuition, there's something that's calling deep in the recesses of Tartarus that's saying such beautiful words and it's beautifully somehow projected for us to believe that this is everything that we've ever wanted and wished for and so we are boating that boarding that boat to our demise and oftentimes with Pluto energy you know it's not even a, a finality because oftentimes, you know, the, the death is just another opportunity for rebirth. So there can be something within the connection and sinistry to where it breaks down to nothing and then it comes back up and also in composite. You know, we're dealing with an energy that likes to tear some stuff down and get to the bottom of it and dig deep into what is hidden and what we've never seen and what we've never explored and experienced and it is very forbidden call to us against our better judgments and even our will that's why it can be um, very mysterious but you can also find yourself quite obsessed and the themes surrounding where Pluto hits um, offer us refinement and transformation most of the time in ways where we feel these things will drag us just directly to the underworld and we think of like I said death but we're actually getting another opportunity to uh, come out of that cocoon and emerge something different because we've went through the thick of it with that person or we have encountered the underworld with that person or shared some secrets or emotional depth um, regardless you know there's something about it that is um, hidden and deep and <clears throat> the breakdown here becomes a soothing understanding of why we knelt at the foot of this shrine in the first place and that is exactly how we can feel in Pluto combinations. Like we are kneeling to the shrine of the Pluto individual 
um, and they are pulling us magnetically in this direction. It's almost as if we recognize our need for help in the obsessive feelings and thoughts, but we allow ourselves to become a prisoner to this alert. So in this respect, in Sinister and Composite, it's difficult for rational thinking to come in. We have to actually pull ourselves out from the depths and get some light to come in to be able to see where this stuff is amiss, where it is possessive, where it is obsessive, where it is um, power struggles. So I was listening to, um, I just had Pandora on one day and Young Blood five seconds of summer came on and I'm like, oh Lord. <sighs> the beginning of the song, remember the words you told me, love me till the day I die. This is a Pluto song. This is a Pluto song. This is saying like, love me till the day I die because the underworld is there. Um, and I'm just a dead man walking tonight because you need it all of the time. And this is the thing with that um, sentence right there. Pluto is a need. It's an obsessive need. It's a controlling need to um, know that this person is as in depth in the connection with synastry connections and composite as you are. Because Pluto is that, like I said, it's that underground. And so I personally am in the Pluto and Scorpio generation. So we believe in uncovering the Pluto Hades archetype and it can draw us into the deepest recesses only for us to realize the energy it took to get to that depth. We're depleted typically. So getting back up out of the dark, AKA the underworld, um, it's easy to fall into but it's hard work to get out of. So, um, you know, with Pluto connections, we've got to have awareness and awareness of self, really, of how we are projecting our shadow, because that's a big part of Pluto, is the shadow side. And the mysterious always calls to those, especially with exalted or dignified Pluto in the natal chart. Also with those with natal placements that show plutonic tendencies, anybody who's got it in synastry or composite, the mysterious is calling and it is Pluto and it can fuck you up. And the reason why is because like I said, before you know it, here we are, we're in the underworld and um, it's been really quickly to dive into that but it's a lot harder to pull yourself out so this is a um sinistry and composite aspect that can also provide some deep healing and understanding because two people are merging in such a in-depth way um in these contacts um it can allow um very powerful bond between these two individuals because they went through some shit together and they also know what they're dealing with because when we're dealing with the unconscious shadow side and we're showing that off with our Pluto um, then really everything else is kind of on the surface of who we are and everything else but um, in these connections, you're meeting people at a greater depth. And that's why it can be so attractive. Um, but also, it can be tough. So, anyhow, I thought I would get on the page and just converse with you guys a little bit about Pluto. Who likes Pluto here? Who likes Pluto? I still believe it should be a planet. Anyway, I'm not going to get on that ramp, but... I hope you all are doing so well, and it's so good to see this page grow, and thank you all so much. I'm gonna continue um, this page with Lilith aspects, nodal aspects, um, synastry, composite. We're gonna talk a little bit about some uh, asteroids this year, so stick with me, and I will speak with you all soon. 
take care. And if you haven't done research on uh, Pluto, do some research on Pluto. Stephen Forrest has got a great book out about Pluto as well and healing some Pluto issues. So, um, and I hope to do some natal Pluto in the future. So take care and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.